I'm Lynn Victoria Parkers. I'm a senior at LHS High School and welcome to Channel 2's News Team. Hi, my name is Michaela Woods. I'm from Lisbon Regional School. I take broadcast tech and I'm a part of the Channel 2 News Team. Hi, my name is Maria Pulaski. I go to Lisbon Regional High School. I take broadcast tech okay. one and I'm a part of Channel 2 News Team. <coughs> Hello, my name is Eric Schaefer. I'm a junior at LHS, a broadcast 2 student and a proud member of News Team 2. Hello, my name is Maria Palazzi and welcome to Channel 2 News. Today's morning announcements include the drama update from Littleton High School players will present the Broadway hit musical Godspell on Thursday, May 7th, Friday, May 8th, and Saturday, May 9th. The curtain will go up each night at 7 p.m. and there will be a matinee on Saturday at 2 p.m. If all you young men out there who are looking for tuxes for prom, Tuxedo rentals are available at so much more at, on Union Street in Littleton. Any alterations that are necessary will be at no extra charge. Call them at 444-6545 or stop by Monday through Saturdays to see our great selection of tuxedos for your prom. LHS prom is Saturday, May 2nd, 2015. Junior class prom tickets, Mrs. Belmore si Stillings will be at LHS during lunch on Tuesday, April 14th to collect money for dues. Remember, you must be current on your class dues in order to attend the prom. Prom tickets will be on sale outside the cafeteria during advisory and lunch on the following days, April 10th, 13th, 17th, and the 27th. NHS is sponsoring a blood drive from 9 to 2 p.m on Thursday, April 16th at the Daisy Bronson Gym. Students and staff 16 years and older who wish to donate, please sign up for a time slot at the redcross.org. Remember, if you are 16, you must fill out a permission form in order to donate. Junior high seventh grade fundraiser, the seventh grade will be selling flowers and snacks starting at se on April 10th until April 17th. This is just in time for Mother's Day. So please help support the 7th grade class by purchasing some nice gifts for your mom or someone who is like a mother to you. Senior Community Service, ou service Hours. Senior Community Service Hours are due by May 1st. If you have not gotten your community service sheets into Mrs. Ward, please do so by that date. If you need help with the hours, please see her. Student elections for the 2015 to 2016 school year are coming in mid-May. If you're a student in grades 7 to 11 and want to run for a class office, you must see your class advisors to com complete a candidate registration form and sign up on the LHS Student Council Bulletin Board by Friday, May 1st. If you want to nominate a classmate for an office, see Mrs. Platt to complete a candidate nomination form. This year's prom dresses come with a sense of elegance and sophistication. Sequin dresses and ball gowns to more, to more understand the slim silhouettes are in for more for this year of 2015. Lace and embellishments in 2014 are being carried into 2015 prom season, being made into varieties of dresses such as mermaid, column, ball gown, and A-line dresses. Necklines are getting higher and higher for those trendsetters out there. There are lots of halter tops, dresses made with straps and necklines completely covered with clear fabric embellished with different rhinestones, rhinestones and jewels. Prom dresses are starting to look at different colors that, may, that not many wore in the past, such as champagne and nude colors. Other popular colors are navy, jewel tones like cranberry and emerald, as well as black. Designers have fallen in love with fall spring colors to look more sophisticated and classy for the year of 2015. Last Friday, LHS was visited by the Harlem Rockets, a comedy basketball team. They play for entertainment rather than winning. The team was lively and the Littleton High School loved the show. Now,
I doing so far with reading? <laughs> Now an update from WMUR Channel 9's news weather. On Wednesday, uh, oh, the high of 66 and a low of 28, <laughs> uh, it's going to be bright and breezy. Thursday, there will be even more sunshine at 64 degrees. Friday, there will be a, possibly a few showers at a high of 62. And looking ahead at your weekend, there will be clouds with uh, p.m. showers and some sun, and it will be possibly breezy on Sunday <coughs> at 61 degrees. And looking ahead at Monday and Tuesday, it'll be in the 50s with clouds and chances of precipitation. Let's go to Victoria and Leah Carey for the ca from the Caledonian Record. Hello, my name is Victoria Parker. I'm here with Leah Carey. And yeah. Leah Carey, you work for the Curry? No, you work for the Caledonian Record. I <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> it's quite all right. OK, I'm going to quickly ask you questions about the life and the day of being a reporter. So first I'm asking, where do you find your stories? The stories come from all over the place. Um, in fact, I was here at Littleton High School recently for the career fair covering it, and I met some of the students in this journalism class, and I thought this would be a great story. So that's why I'm here today, to talk to all of you about why you're taking journalism, and then uh, I ended up getting interviewed as well. <laughs> but, <laughs> but our stories come from all over the place. Anything that I, um, I write a lot of features, human interest, so anything that is a real sort of interesting story. Do you sometimes have to write different themes in human interest if there's like not enough? Um, I also write some business and well, you know, because we're a small newspaper, we're a daily, but we have a smaller staff, we'll all cover whatever needs to be covered on any given day. There are even times when I end up going to court to take pictures or do things like that. You said a smaller staff. How many people is that roughly? Well, um, between everyone, including our news carriers, like our, um, our, uh, the newsboys, uh, we have somewhere between 50 and 100. And that's a small staff? What's a big? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a small, sta a small reporting staff. We have um, a few people here in Littleton, some uh, group in St. Johnsbury, and then some people up in the Newport Derby area of Vermont. Okay, so do you like, um, do you have meetings every weekly or do you just kind of like, hey, I'm going to go out and find anything I would like? <laughs> no, I sit down with my editors every week for a, a um, staff meeting to sort of figure out where we're going. Um, it's both a short-term and a long-term planning session. So we'll sp figure out specifically which stories I'm going to work on this week and then also look at you know, the calendar for the coming months and what are com what's coming up that we want to make sure that we cover. Okay, so like your editors, they, they sit down and say, okay, this week you're going to film, you're going to interview this, or do you decide? Who um, well, we decide with, they tell me which stories they want me to turn in on which days, and then it's my responsibility to figure out when, how, and where to get the stories. Do they give you like um, five stories, like you have your meeting on Monday and they say, okay, we need these five stories by Friday, or is it like? It's, yeah, we meet on Thursdays for the following week, and I usually turn in three to four stories a week. Wow, okay. Uh, so do you work desk job every day, but you must go out and film and interview, I'm guessing? Yep, I do a lot of work out of the office, and then there's also a lot of desk work where I'm taking, um, you know, I, I record everything that I do on a little voice recorder, so I spend a lot of time typing up my notes and then writing the stories. Do you, like, how many hours a week do you work, roughly? I work about 40 hours a week. So an average week, um, mm -hmm. how many of those hours would you say is desk job compared to, like, in the field? You know, it, it changes every week. Part of what I really like about this job is that every day is different. There's no single kind of day that's always the same. Sometimes I'm in the office all day, 
and sometimes I'm out like today. Um, today I'm interviewing you guys this morning, and then this afternoon I'll be out interviewing our local Miss New Hampshire contestant. Do you guys have like a good newspaper policy, good neighbor policy? Because you guys are competing with the courier in town. <laughs> we, we definitely try to be collegial with the courier. We, we have a good working relationship with them, but we're also competitors. And, you know, we like to get the story before they do if we ever can. <laughs> do you guys like um, share stories at some point? Do you guys have like a huge story you guys both share or something? With the courier, we don't generally have that kind of relationship, but we do with other papers in the state and in the nation. There's a, a national organization called the Associated Press um, that we're a part of, and we share all of our stories with them. And in return, we're able to take stories that are shared by other newspapers in the country. So you guys, you guys don't write national news. You guys just write local. Yeah, we're what is called a hyper local paper, which means that we only write about stories that are within our specific news coverage area, which is um, the northern Grafton County and some of Coas County in New Hampshire, and then Caledonia County and some of Essex and Orleans County in Vermont. Um, outside of that, if there's something that needs to be covered, we'll take those stories from the Associated Press. So if a story happens in Manchester, like a huge one that affects the state, would you guys write about that? Only if it involved somebody from Littleton or Lisbon. Only if it involved a local person. Otherwise, we would take it from the Associated Press. Well, thank you so much for this interview. Thank you. Thank you. Well, we hope to see you again, and hopefully our interviews for you will be just as good. I'm sure they will. <laughs> okay, we'll go back to Maria. Last Saturday at the, at the Colonel Town Recreation Center, the Cub Scouts had a Pinewood Derby where they raced small wooden cars that the boys made themselves. They raced down a straight track, and whoever made it to the end first would move to the, on to the double elimination tournament bracket. There were trophies for the top three spots and also for different categories, such as creativity. When <laughs> such as creativity. When talking to a few of the Cub Scouts, they all seemed very excited about their cars they made themselves. The boys also had very good sportsmanship, giving out high fives and shouting encouragement to their friends. And when they didn't win, there were no sou sour losers. Congrats to all the Cub Scouts who put time into building their cars and came out to race. Last Monday, the Varsity Girls tennis team played their, mon their opening match at Remick Park. Littleton's returning state champs won the match with eight games won and one game lost. It went really well for the first match, says Varsity Junior Allie Horn. The girls' tennis team won a 2014 state ti title last year and are coming back with strong numbers this year in search for another banner. Thank you for tuning in. I'm Maria Palazzi, and this has been Channel 2 News.